Okay, so as we've covered already, both electric flight and hydrogen flight are still a long way off for the vast majority of air travel. Both batteries and hydrogen storage suffer from poor energy density by weight or by volume relative to conventional jet fuel, which is usually referred to as kerosene. The solution to this problem, as presented by the industry, is to create jet fuel using carbon taken from the atmosphere and biosphere, rather than extract fossil fuel from the ground that will then emit additional carbon into the atmosphere when it's burned. There's various ways of doing this, but they can be grouped into two categories, biofuel and synthetic fuel. Biofuel uses agricultural waste or crops from farms, municipal waste from cities or used cooking oil. The most cost effective solution is fuel from waste. However, there's nowhere near enough waste to produce the large quantities of jet fuel required by aviation. Fuel from crops is not a scalable solution either. There simply isn't enough space on the planet to start covering it in even more biofuels while still leaving space for wildlife and to feed a growing human population. Particularly not at a time when land and water resource are already scarce. We're already rapidly deforesting the planet and many people still can't afford to eat. So a key takeaway here is that biofuels cannot be scaled sustainably. They should be removed from consideration. Any discussion of them just confuses things and provides false hope. Now, while biofuels can't be scaled, synthetic fuels can. Synthetic jet fuel, which is a liquid hydrocarbon, is produced by synthesizing hydrogen with carbon. Hydrogen can be produced from water using electrolysis and carbon can be sucked from the atmosphere using a process called direct air capture. If all of these processes are powered by low carbon electricity, then this could greatly reduce the carbon emissions produced relative to fossil fuel. However, there's a catch. The technology is still in its early infancy, so costs are still incredibly high. All of the processes used are energy intensive and inefficient, so they waste energy at every stage. Producing enough synthetic jet fuel for the UK aviation industry in 2018 would have required three quarters of the existing grid capacity running all year. And even as the processes are improved and the infrastructure is scaled, it's still likely to remain three to five times the price of conventional fuel for the next few decades. Take a look at this recent chart from McKinsey. It shows the projected costs of synthetic jet fuel and liquid hydrogen relative to a baseline of fossil fuel kerosene. It's worth noting that while liquid hydrogen looks cost competitive relative to synthetic jet fuel, it's not as good functionally. It requires large storage tanks, which adds aircraft weight, volume and drag. And you can see that even by 2050, synthetic jet fuel will still cost three times the current price of conventional fossil fuel. It's also important to note that as other sectors such as road transport decarbonize, that will reduce the demand for oil and may push the price of fossil fuels down further still. What we really need is an increasing emissions price to make fossil fuels more expensive and to make synthetic fuel more cost competitive. So the takeaway messages are, firstly, that biofuel can't be scaled, and secondly, that synthetic fuels can, but they will not be competitive with conventional jet fuel, without, of course, effective emissions pricing.